Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to watch this Quadball UK introduction to two-armed contact in Quadball. Quadball differs from other full contact sports through the inclusion of the broom, a metre-long plastic pole that players must keep between their legs during play. The broom affects the way contact is implemented in two significant ways, both linking back to how players attempt to stay mounted during contact. Now that two-armed wraps have become legal, it is important to note that the broom will be harder to direct away from contact if such a wrap is initiated with both arms around the body of a player. Another way in which the presence of the broom changes contact is how players attempt to stay mounted during a two-armed tackle. Since both arms are now occupied in wrapping the opposing player, the broom must instead be held between the legs by keeping them close together. This prevents the tackler from being able to keep a wide stance and ultimately leads to them having less control over their fall as they bring an opposing player to ground. The first thing to cover before explaining any forms of contact is how to fall in a safe and controlled manner. This is something that should be taught to all players before they engage in any full contact training or matches as it can prevent or mitigate the vast majority of injuries that arise from tackles. There are three forms of fall that will be covered in this section. The main aim of all three is to spread out the impacts with the ground across as much time and area as possible in order to minimise mechanical stress and deceleration. The first form is used for when falling with sideways momentum. This is also the form that players should default to when falling forwards. Begin training this form without a broom or ball in hand and from a kneeling position, gradually building up to a full scenario where you may be standing, mounted and with a ball in hand. When falling sideways, you should impact the ground sequentially, beginning with your knee, preceded by your hip, and then the back of your tucked shoulder. It is incredibly important that you do not stick out your hand or elbow to abruptly stop the fall. All this does is risk an injury to your arm and or shoulder. Note how you should tuck your head as you tuck your shoulder and turn away from the ground. This protects your head and allows you to roll across your back, spreading the impact further. As you fall from a standing position, note how you should be turning away from the ground to protect your knee and hip and instead impact with the side of your upper leg and your backside before rolling across the back of your tucked shoulder. The second form is for falling backwards with little or no sideways momentum. Practice this form from a squatting position before progressing to a standing position with a broom. As you fall backwards, aim to roll up as much of your back as possible beginning with just above your backside in order to spread out the impact. Don't forget to tuck your head forwards in order to prevent any abrupt impacts with the ground. You may also bring your arms out backwards as you roll across your back in order to further spread out the impact. Keeping in mind that you should contact the ground with the entirety of your arm flat against it, rather than leading with any points such as your hands, wrists or elbows. This final form is only used as a last resort, in the unfortunate circumstance of falling forwards where you are unable to rotate to face away from the ground as you fall. If you find yourself falling forward like this, you should similarly impact the ground sequentially, beginning with your knees. You should then bring your arms in front of you with your palms facing you such that you will impact the ground with the flats of your forearms. This form you should practice initially from a kneeling position before progressing to a squatting position rather than a full standing position in order to prevent injury. Now that we've covered how to fall safely, we can move on to safely and effectively wrapping and tackling an opposing player. Now that two-armed contact is legal within the UK, players and referees should note that it is always the responsibility of a tackling player to ensure the safety of the player they are tackling. Therefore, it is important to emphasise that any legal contact that is conducted in a reckless or egregious manner should be penalised under rules 6112 and 6113 respectively. When going in to wrap or tackle an opposing player, there are several factors to consider. The first of which is whether the player you are attempted to tackle is moving with significant momentum or is at least semi-stationary. For example, if a player is moving with significant momentum towards you and you aim to halt their progress, the most effective application of contact would be to use their momentum against them and bring them to ground by tackling them over your body. Another example of where bringing a player to ground would be beneficiary would be if a player was stationary and you needed to hold them in position or distract them for a certain window of time. If you intend on bringing a player to ground with a tackle, how you wrap them is important to both their safety as well as yours. Firstly, if the player is moving with momentum, initiate the contact with one arm and use your second arm to bind into the wrap. This initiation with one arm allows you to hold the broom away from contact as it is initiated. This also allows you to hold a wider stance before contact which doesn't limit your mobility in the case that the opposing player attempts to manoeuvre around you. Bringing the second arm in just as contact is initiated allows you to better prevent the opposing player from spinning out or otherwise escaping the wrap. Where you wrap on the player's body is also incredibly important for how you proceed with contact. Wrapping below the opposing player's centre of gravity, or in other words below the broom, 
has the potential to cause a situation similar to what is known as a dump tackle or tip tackle in rugby. In this situation, the player being tackled has the potential to contact the floor in an unsafe manner. If both the feet of the player being tackled lead the floor at any point in such a tackle, it should be deemed illegal under Rule 611J. The ideal place to wrap around a player to gain the most leverage and control over their centre of gravity is the lower torso. Ideally, you should aim to bring your shoulder into their navel as you wrap around their waist. This also allows you to keep your head out of contact until the wrap has been initiated. If you have wrapped the opposing player correctly and you intend to bring the player to ground, the most effective direction for you to force a tackle is the direction in which their momentum is already travelling. In most situations, this means bringing the player to ground over your own body. If a player being tackled is initially stationary, it is still advised that you bring them to ground over you as this minimises the risk of injury for both players involved. The correct way to do this is for you to begin the process of falling backwards as previously explained in the second form of falling, whilst pulling the player you are wrapping towards you and over your shoulder that you currently have in their navel. It is important not to bring the player directly over you rather than over your shoulder as not only does this endanger you as a tackler, but also inhibits the opposing player's ability to roll and absorb the impact with the ground. Once you both impact the ground, either continue your wrap or allow the player you are wrapping to roll away from a contact. Another situation could be that the opposing player is relatively stationary and you want to move them in some way, either to remove them from an area of play or to drive them over a restrictor or boundary line to force a turnover. In this situation, you'd be able to wrap the upper torso of the player since you're not bringing them to the ground. It's also possible to perform an arm link tackle with two arms. This also includes the linking or grabbing of both arms of an opposing player in order to restrain them whilst they are in possession of a ball. The emphasis remains that the wrapping player must not yank or apply any sharp and sudden force through such a wrap. Another important aspect to consider when contacting a semi-stationary player is that you'd be able to contact such a player from behind, provided you yourself are stationary. The specific ruling for limited contact from behind is that you must completely stop your momentum towards a player you intend on contacting before initiating such a contact. You're allowed to take a single step towards the opposing player once you have stopped your momentum, but your back foot must remain on the ground before contact is initiated. If you find yourself tackling a player from behind, once again it is safest for you to bring them to ground over your own body as previously explained. I hope that you found this video useful and thank you for watching. If you have any further queries regarding these rules and amendments, please contact Quadboy UK Gameplay Department through the email in the description.